Greetings, Strictly Medicinal Materia Medica course, Garden Sage, Salvia Officinalis, in the family Mint, the Lamiaceae. There are 250 different species of mint with over 2,000 different subspecies or varieties. And this one is the queen of them all, Garden Sage, Salvia Officinalis, the officinalis adage means used in the apothecary. It is the main one that is functional for medicinal herb use, as well as being a culinary herb of great repute. The part used is the leaf, which is visible here in the late summer. On this day, October of 2017. Sage is a woody perennial, isn't it? And so uh, it thrives actually in a large number of different environments um, from zones 3 all the way up through 10. But ideally it grows in an environment which is typical to the one where it was born in the Mediterranean where the winters are cold and wet and the summers are hot and dry. Meanwhile, it can be grown in gardens almost anywhere, which I think is one of the reasons why it's the official species. Besides the fact that it has a pretty good taste and a pretty predictable activity as a medicinal plant. The leaves are harvested on the frond, the branch, uh, on the afternoon of a warm day after the dew has evaporated and then laid out on screens in a dry and airy location, turned frequently until crispy, and then rubbed through a screen to remove the sticks, the bruised and broken bits of sage leaf are then used to make the tea or to make the culinary uh, adjunct. So the herb can also be used fresh as a fresh tincture or as a sort of a mnemonic device because it tends to uh, improve memory and improve cognition. So if you're taking your SAT test, you can just bring a frond of sage in with you to the classroom unless it's disallowed and that may help you remember your facts and if you're writing poems or or writing a piece of literature you may find that rubbing your hands over the fresh sage and smelling your hands or bringing a frond with you into the study is an effective way of improving your ability to express yourself. The tincture of the dried herb is quite standard as a medicinal and also the uh, basic tea of the dried herb is very useful mainly uh, for the purpose of drying up secretions and in weaning children you generally would drink a cup of sage tea uh, two or three times a day and that will help dry up the, the milk and for people who are overly sweaty and say you're giving a recital and you want to not you know soak your your suit then you can drink some sage tea and it will reduce perspiration as well then the uh, gargle of the sage tea or the tincture diluted in water is very, very useful for treating a sore throat. It has an antibacterial, antifungal, and antiviral activity, and the tannins in the plant help astringe tissue and improve the tonicity of uh, mucous membranes and reduce pain. Externally, uh, sage makes an antibacterial mouthwash and a stringent gargle for treating sore throat. For food use, sage is an agreeable spice, if not used in excess. It's a requisite ingredient for making stuffing for roasted poultry and other protein dishes. It 
can be used in vegetarian stir fries. A little bit goes a long way. It is useful uh, uh, rubbed between the palms until it's fluffy and uh, the particles are small, and then that can be uh, dropped by the pinch full into the cooking right at the end of the uh, cycle of heating so that you don't volatilize all the essential oils and that makes the the uh, food taste a little bit more like sage when you actually serve it up at table. Um, sage does contain a considerable amount of food jar, which can be toxic if taken in excess so it's important not to use the plant during pregnancy and also uh, to not use excessive quantities of sage tincture internally. It's really not necessary to use that much. It works at a relatively low dosage. I've had a good time talking to you about sage today. I hope that you grow sage in your garden and that you always remember to use it. Merely smelling of its aromatic foliage certainly will remind you.